slippers this year. Oh, Terrell, I need your help. My backpack blower's all jacked up. It's making a noise that I never heard before. Well, if it's making a noise I think it's making, it's a very expensive repair. What? This is a steel. This is an expensive blower. These, these things are indestructible. Yeah, well, even they make junk. Oh, great. Well, can you at least check it out for me? Sure. Throw it up there on that uh, lift so I can take a look at it. So what's the noise it's making? Fired up. Fired up. Fired up. Shut up! <laughs> I don't want to hear that. That noise? Yeah. Yeah, that's the noise it's making. So you probably think that there's just something loose and rattling around yeah, in there? Yeah, maybe the flywheel came loose or something. And no, it's that's not it. Oh. It's got a serious engine defect. But, but it's a steel. Yeah. They make the best products ever. No. In this case, all they did was skimp on one little tiny part <laughs> that they use on every one of their other blowers, but for some reason, they didn't want to use it on these big four mix blowers. Well, why would they do that? I have no idea why they did it. So I spent all this money on this steel backpack thinking it's going to be great because steel's best and now it's junk. Great. Yeah, well, even still makes junk. Well, can you at least show me what went bad inside of there? I want to see. Sure, but it's going to entail tearing the whole engine down. Wow, that sounds pretty involved but I got nothing but time on my hands, so let's tear into this baby. Yeah, and unlike uh, you, unlike me, I have no time on my hands, because I'm busy all the time. So why don't you take your piece of crap still backpack blower and go home and cry in your cereal. Right. No, 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 we'll tear it apart. Because <sighs> the grass rats want to see what's wrong with this thing. Yeah. Don't you? What I'm talking about? And you're going to be amazed and how cheap they went on this one little part, which would have solved the whole problem on this expensive blower. That's your little buddies over there at Stilch. All right, gotta pull the recoil. There's two screws here, two screws there. That removed this cover, which I had already taken off. this off. We're going to take the spark plug out and I'm going to show you what's going on here. So Mr. Cameraman, you're going to have to get in that spark plug hole because that rattling noise is the piston. Can you see that? Can you see the piston flopping around in there? Now I'm going to explain what's going on. So I want to use this chainsaw to demonstrate what happened with this blower and why it's making that rattling noise. So on every piece of two cycle equipment, they use a needle bearing in the end of the connecting rod. And for some reason, Stilch decided on these big backpack blowers not to use a needle bearing. They use the bronze bushing. Now don't ask me why. I asked my brother Farrell, who's a big Stilch dealer, and he said he even tried to get answers from them as to why they would not use a needle bearing. And a, they use a bronze bushing. So that needle bearing goes here, and then the wrist pin goes through it. So that bushing is all wore out and that piston's flopping around on the end of the rod. So I did my research. Where's my box? Here it is. And I looked at all the parts breakdowns of all the models of blowers that they have. And the backpack blowers, starting with the BR500, 550, this is a 600, the BR700, 
and the BR-800 all have a bronze bushing. The other blowers, the BR-200, the 320, the 320L, all these models have a wrist pin bearing, have this needle bearing. So why they went cheap on these blowers is beyond me. And you cannot replace that bushing in the end of the connecting rod. You can't replace it. It's a non-replaceable part. You have to buy the whole crankshaft. Ugh. And the last time I checked, that whole crankshaft assembly is $378. Buy a new blower for that. And then the labor to tear this thing all down and replace the crankshaft, it's, it's, it's not worth it. You could just buy another blower. So I could fix this, because this is Terrell Fixes All, but most people don't opt to spend all that money to have it repaired when they could just go buy another blower, unless you're doing it yourself. So there's a couple of reasons why that bearing fails. One of the reasons, if you're using cheap two cycle oil, because you have to get lubrication up to this bearing. So what you're saying is that dollar store oil that I've been using is probably not good? No, you shouldn't be using dollar store oil on it. Ugh. These things run hot. This, this is a four mix. This has got valves in it. They run hot. So when it runs hotter, it's gonna need more lubricant. So why wouldn't they use a needle bearing? I don't know. On something that runs hot. Another thing that happens is what's called phase separation. And that's where the oil separates from the gas because you have to use two cycle oil in this four mix, which is a four cycle engine. It doesn't have a separate crankcase to put oil in like your car does, like a four cycle engine. It's called a four mix. It's a four stroke engine and you have to mix two cycle oil in it. So if you have phase separation where the oil separated from the gas, that again, you're not gonna get lubrication up to that connecting rod. Now I know what you're saying, Terrell. Terrell, I know what you're saying, grass rats, to Terrell. Well, why don't, why don't you tear it apart, Terrell, and find a needle bearing that'll fit in there, and then you could fix it with a needle bearing. There's a problem with that, too. Look at this connecting rod on this chainsaw. See how it's discolored at the top? It's discolored because it was heat treated. This was heat treated and hardened. They didn't heat treat the end of this connecting rod. So if I found a needle bearing that would fit in there, it's gonna be in the end of that connecting rod that's not heat treated and it's just gonna tear up the needle bearing. So that's not gonna work, grass rats, to be able to do that. The end of the connecting rod's gotta be heat treated. So let's tear it apart and look at it. Let's just tear this thing apart. It's garbage anyway. Let's just tear it down. We're already tearing down the company. Let's, <laughs> let's tear down this unit. Oh, I'm sure they got some crazy reason. So I'm gonna pull the valve cover off. Because this is gonna kinda of tell me what kind of oil they were using. Now it's pretty clean up there. Yep, only the best, dollar store. So a telltale sign under here, if this would have been all carboned up and gunked up with a bunch of gunk and crap, that would have told me that they were using a cheap oil. They might not have been using the correct oil. That's why it's important to use that four mix oil. If you're using that four mix oil, chances are you're not having an issue with this. But just in case you got one of these blowers and it's making that rattling noise, that's the problem. So to save time, I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble this down to the part where we're gonna pull it apart. Under this cover is the camshaft. 
Because remember, it's a four-stroke engine that uses two-cycle oil. So there's your cam, which is made out of plastic. And these are your, your lifters. I haven't worked on too many of these because we don't see a lot of them. I also removed the four screws from down here. So let's pop this off. And let's pull this piston out and look at it. Look at it, look at it. They weren't using the right oil. Look at that. Just run a little sandpaper over that, it'll be good. Yeah, right slippers. <laughs> and look at how hot that got up there. It's dry. So you gotta buy the whole crankshaft right here. So that's what, 300 dollars $378 for this. And then we'd have to buy a piston. I wanna see that bronze bushing in there. That was that rattling noise. But the piston looked like it was flopping around in there. It's all galled up, the cylinder's all galled. Just massive. So yeah. That's what happens when you don't use the correct oil. So wouldn't you have to replace that head too? If it's yeah. all scored? So what it's gonna cost to fix this, you could just go buy another one. That's why this stuff is pretty much garbage when it gets to this point. When there's this much damage, that's why you gotta tear it down and assess the damage. Now usually that rattling is because this bushing is bad and the piston was flopping, but you could see through the piston hole when we were, uh, or through the spark plug hole, when we were, you know, rotating it up and down, this thing was flopping around in there. You could visibly see, that told me it was that, I hope if I put it in the right way. That told me it was the piston, you know, the wrist pin. Because you can see it flipping and flopping around. But yeah, this thing's garbage. Yeah, it could be repaired, but again, it's going to cost more than, than it's worth. Let me uh, pop those clips out. Yeah, look at that. It's dry. There's no lubrication up there at all. I have no idea what oil they were using in this thing. Usually when you pop the valve cover off, it'll be all crusty up in there. I mean, you're gonna have some of that. But yeah, garbage. Okay, I pop one of the retaining clips out on the other side of the piston, and then you find yourself a socket that's a little bit smaller than the wrist pin. Got it stuck. There we go. And that's what I'm talking about. There's that bronze bushing in there. Now a lot of times that fails. Now as you saw, it'll, it'll still run, but eventually it'll lock up. See, needle bearing in here on this end of the crank. So why wouldn't they put a needle bearing in here like they do on every one of their chainsaws and stuff? Why would they go cheap on that part? So that's why it's important to use the right lubricants on this stuff.
Don't just sit there, no, we just know it was all the same. It's just all the same. No, it ain't all the same. Oh, that's still, they just want you to buy their oil. The oil's the same. No, it's not the same. Got to use that four mix oil. Got to shake it up, make sure it's all shaked up and mixed good. And you're mixing it correctly. Otherwise, this could happen to you. Oh, oh I should have been mixing the oil right and using the good oil. Well, I guess I can't blame steel completely, but... Yeah, it's your fault too. So is it my fault? Yes. Maybe like 15%. No, like 90%. Yeah, you're right. 99%. Well, there you have it. This is what happens when you don't use the right lubricants on this steel Formix stuff. In my opinion, it's garbage. Some of their products, especially this, these big Formix blowers. Forcing you to use their lubricant in order to make this thing work and run properly. So if you've got one of these blowers and you're using cheap oil, you might want to run down to your steel stealer and get that four mix oil before you do damage like this, which is gonna cost you, as Ronnie says, a lot of money. Yeah, don't make the mistake that I did, thinking that you can just run whatever oil in there and it'd be all good. Yeah, this is what happens. You just think the dealer is just, you know, trying to sell more product. No, there's a reason why they want you to use that four mix. It's got special chemicals in there to help lubricate so this doesn't happen. So, subscribe to this YouTube channel, Terrell Fixes All. I'm Terrell, showing you this crap. Go to our web store, buy some of our merchandise. We got all kinds of stuff, like this beautiful warm hoodie. How come you're not wearing one? Where'd you get that? Uh, I don't know, this just showed up somewhere. Kind of sucky, would you have a coupon for that? Yeah, I did, they were having a sale. Follow me at Slippers on Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> with your junk lawn equipment. And as always, there's your, your dinner. dinner. Woo! Look at the carnage! Cost, what, a couple bucks more for the right oil? Yep. Going cheap? This is what happens. It's all the same. That oil's all the same. Comes out of the ground, it's going back in the ground. <laughs>